Welcome to the Breakup Recovery Podcasts by your host, Barbara Stevens. Discover the wisdom and remarkable insights of Barbara Stevens, breakup recovery mentor, author, and public speaker. Barbara offers programs and solutions for any breakup so you can turn your life around, create lasting changes for the better, and embrace life again. Hello and welcome to Breakup Recovery Podcast. I'm Barbara Stevens and I'm a Breakup Recovery Mentor. And in this episode, I welcome Orion Talmai. Now, Orion helps women increase their energy levels, develop a sexy confidence, ignite their passion and discover a sense of freedom with ease and flow. So welcome, Orion. Hello. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Tell me about you, Orion. What led you to helping women shine? I had to go through my own dark moment and find my way to the light and find my own way to shine. So it took a lot. It took a lot of work on the mental, physical, and spiritual aspects of me and my world. And because I've been through so much and I learned so much, I felt compelled to help others the way I was helped. What are some of the tips or ideas that you can give women who have been through a breakup and their self-confidence is shattered, they're not feeling good about themselves, they're in a very dark place. So what would you advise women to do so that they can love themselves again? Yeah, you know, I I did a seven-day challenge for 450 women. It's called Awaken Your Inner Goddess Challenge. And it was all about that. It was about taking those steps to get out of the darkness, get out of the yuckiness and connecting into your your self-love and appreciation. The first step in the challenge that I did was something that helped me tremendously. And it's called mirror work. It's uh, Louise Hay's work. Um, she also have a book called Mirror Work, but it's pretty simple. Louise says, when something good happen, run to the mirror and say, I love you. And when something bad happens, run to the mirror and say, I love you. I love you no matter what. And it's very interesting because every day was a different challenge. And mirror work was something that so many women were struggling with. It's not easy to look in the mirror and say I love you to you when you're feeling self-loathing or all this shame and guilt and blame but it's like practicing training your muscles in the gym you practice self-love and every day little bit at a time you become stronger more powerful more connected and more loving toward yourself Yes, it is hard to look at yourself in the mirror, probably even on a good day. But when you are, <laughs> when you are feeling the deepest depression or the deepest hurt and anger and anguish when you're going through a breakup, it can be very difficult to look yourself in the mirror and say, I love you. Oh, yeah. I know the first times I did it uh, where I was completely broken after a terrible relationship. It was an abusive relationship. I ended up in a hospital and... You know, I was so broken and trying to do it was very hard. And the first day I looked in the mirror and I said, I said, I love you. And I couldn't do it. I couldn't even look at myself. The second day I just started crying. The third day I was crying as well. But the more I did it, the easier it got. And and it got to a place where I look in the mirror and I'm like, I freaking love you. You're the best thing ever. You're amazing. Thank you for being you. It doesn't happen in a day. There are stages to recovery. And you have to go through the hurt. And you don't have to. But it just happens that you go through the hurt and the pain and the shame and the self-sabotage. But if you have the intention to recover, the awareness and the decision to recover, you will, and it will will become easier. So do you still say that to yourself, look yourself in the mirror every day and say, I love you? It's not an everyday practice now. It's Now it's just automatic where I look at myself every once in a while and I'll 
give myself some love because if you cannot give yourself some love you can't expect anybody else to to love you the way you want to be loved you teach other people how to treat you and it starts with the way you treat yourself so you are a love coach as well so tell me more about that Orion well it took a while for me to recover and like I said it wasn't just mirror work I also because I was full of rage and anger and I was claiming my power I went and I did martial arts I lifted weight I I found my physical strength and then I connected to spirit and That journey served me. It was amazing to become so strong physically, but also really connected me to my masculine. And it served me at the time. You know, the the first stage of recovery is survivor, survival, where you gotta you gotta survive, you gotta claim your power. And it was awesome, but it didn't help me in finding love. And so it took a while for me to just journey into my feminine and understanding my what my feminine can bring to the world for me to attract my husband. So I guess that leads me to the next question. So what habits should a single woman develop while looking for her soulmate? Uh, Well, the habit of self-care is the most important thing. It's just that the habit of self-care, the habit of finding, you know, we release trauma through movement So connecting to her wounded feminine, doing some kind of feminine movement like belly dancing or pole dancing or kundalini movement, whatever sensual goddess-like feminine movement she can connect with and resonates with her just to move this energy away from her body and release the trauma and channel her true power I mean, we all are both feminine and masculine, and when the feminine is really wounded, it just shut down, and then we just operate from a masculine place. But if a woman who is feminine in her core, if she just operates from the masculine most of the time, it tends to feel locked. It tends to feel trapped. It tends to feel like there is a, a lack of freedom and a lack of air and flow and creativity which is of the feminine traits when you talk about the masculine side of a woman Mm -hmm. what do you mean by that the masculine side well we're all some people call it masculine feminine and i'm going to use masculine feminine for this conversation because it's easier it's the yin and yang it's the polar opposite the dark and the light where if you look at what the masculine and the world represent it's more to hunt, to get, to conquer, to control, to build, to do. And it's really important to use those traits, mostly in business. It's like your your masculine part is important. And the feminine is the part, it's like the, the mother, the flow, the creative, the, the freedom. When you think about feminine, it's like a breath of air. It's a sigh. It's an ease. And that part, especially living in big cities, being entrepreneurs, uh, being hurt by our male partners, being a feminist, trying to, because it seems like almost like the feminist movement is like, I'm going to be a better man than you are. And it's good and it serves a purpose. And it's also really nice to connect to that essence that is something that we, we are born with. It's our lineage. So I guess you're saying try not to have too much of the masculine side. Obviously, we need to because we need to gather food, we need to work, we need to earn money. But you're, I guess, saying in some ways we need to also get in touch with our feminine side and that would be to do the feminine things like dancing and what other things would you recommend? The original circle was... The, the feminine circle, the, the women would sit around the fire and they would sit around the fire because when they are in circle, they could watch each other from predators and the kids were in the middle and they would share and they would protect each other. So connecting to other women on that level of sisterhood is 
is really powerful to to awaken that power that power of the feminine taking care of yourself through i don't know relaxing in a bubble bath going dancing doing girly things you know treating yourself with maybe less seriously having more fun like a little child is just a wonderful way to be and it doesn't mean that you're not a serious strong powerful driven woman it actually means that you're even more powerful because you are strong in both sides you're strong in your masculine and you're strong in your feminine and that is like using all your power instead of just using a part of you that is running your life mm, that makes sense so what would you say would be a mistake that a woman could make when they're trying to find love again uh, the mistake that women do mostly is they, well, we are all under pressure. The media shows beautiful young girls in commercials and the clock is ticking and people are, I mean, women are under so much pressure. And when it comes to finding love, it's better to not meet somebody for the first time and already imagine you yourself marrying him and then because then women, the women exude this energy of of like there is lack of abundance there is this sense of neediness there is this undercurrent of pressure that they 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 scare the men off or they're becoming like using their masculine side they're becoming more of like the hunters there are way better feminine ways to hunt which are, I don't even call it hunting, I call it attracting. So the biggest mistake I would say would be that neediness to, to find love when meeting a new person. Mm. I want to go back to something that you said earlier about connecting to your spirit. How did you do that after your abusive relationship? Hypnosis, uh, meditation. I even spent some time in an ashram in India and connected to spirit to spirit there and I took many seminars I traveled around the world I studied with the best in the world and I just find that the more I invest in learning about my spirituality the the better I get uh, the better person I become one of the things that I learned in Oneness University was uh, to connect to God universe creator whatever you call a higher force from a place of love rather than from a place of fear, um, which was really powerful for me, just seeing that entity as, as something that wants to love and carry you. And it takes a lot of the pressure off when you sometime allow that higher power to help you instead of trying to figure it all out on your own. When I coach women, for example, you know, I studied from the best. I know a lot. I'm super educated in many, many things. And when it comes to coaching somebody and connecting to them, I don't have all the answers. I've only been on earth for a few decades. It's not like I can't know everything. So I just open myself as a channel for the divine guidance or the universal Google because we can, when we open ourselves, our vessel into the power of creation, we can download ideas, uh, we can download everything. All the invention that happened, happened from a higher download. Somebody was connected to spirit and they invented the light bulb, <laughs> you know? So it's the same way. you just connecting yourself to to that universal subconscious mind and universal spirit. And I guess that's what coaching's all about, isn't it? A coach never, or not necessarily has all the answers. A coach helps facilitate the person they're working with to find the right answers or guidance for that particular person. Correct, creating a safe space and environment for them to express and you know it's like it's interesting just the intention of the coach and the intention of 
the person who is being coached to get a breakthrough is enough to create a breakthrough. Mm. So if people want to find out more about what you do or connect with you and find out what you offer, where can they find this information? Sure, go to orionsmethod.com and if you want to download my ebook for becoming a, a love magnet, then go to orionsmethod.com forward slash love magnet. You can also find me on Instagram and Twitter, orion.talmai, and on Facebook. Thank you, Orion. <laughs> Thank you, Orion, for coming on Breakup Recovery Podcast and sharing your insights and ideas and tips for women to reconnect with themselves and to have a balance between the masculine and the feminine side. Also to talking about your mirror work, I think that's very important for women who are going through a breakup and are struggling. To mm. That could be one of the first steps that they can use to empower themselves to feel better. So thank you again, Orion, for coming on Break Up Recovery Podcast. Thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed listening to this episode number 097, How to Start Loving Yourself Again After a Breakup with Orion Talame. Orion shared quite a few strategies that could help you on your road to recovery after your breakup. I've added Orion's website in the summary, so be sure to look that up, especially if you want to download her free ebook, How to Become a Love Magnet. On another note, if you've been listening to previous Breakup Recovery podcast episodes, you know that I'm coming up to my 100th episode soon, and I wanted to do something different and special for the 100th episode, which is scheduled for the end of September. I would love to answer any questions you might have for me. They could be questions I might not have answered in previous Breakup Recovery podcasts. Or maybe you would like me to answer a question more in depth. Maybe I skimmed over an answer. Or because of time restraints, I didn't quite give you enough details or aspects or points on this particular subject. Or you may have a request of a subject you would like me to cover. So there are a couple of ways you can send through your questions or comments about my 100th episode and that could be to go to my website barbarastevens.com.au and click on the contact button. Another way would be to go to my Facebook page Barbara Stevens Breakup Recovery Mentor and hit the message button and do it that way. Whatever works for you. I won't mention your name when I'm reading out your question if you don't want me to. So be sure to mention that in your email or your message to me that you don't want your name read out. I look forward to receiving your questions, your comments, your observations and recording my 100th episode of Breakup Recovery Podcast. And the last thing I'd like to say is be gentle on yourself. You deserve happiness. If you would like to hear previous Breakup Recovery podcasts, visit barbastevens.com.au. Connect with Barbara Stevens on social media with Barbara Stevens Breakup Recovery Mentor on Facebook and at You'll Be Okay on Twitter. Read further blogs, view webinar replays, and download your free ebook, Three Easy Steps to Surviving Your Breakup, and much more at barbastevens.com.au.